Nathan Hill is an actor and filmmaker hailing from Melbourne, Australia. Work he's done includes A Vampire in The Queen of the Damned, Lead in Radio Samurai, his first feature, Tomboys, and Model Behavior, a film he acted in, produced, and directed, which won Best Film at the California Film Awards in 2013. This experience, however, came with a good amount of struggles, as trying to be a filmmaker in Australia hasn't always been good to him. Today, we're going to explore the highs and lows of a man with a passion for movies, martial arts, and horror. Nathan's been a fan of the horror genre since he was a kid, when he spent most of his time indoors watching movies. His father was an exorcist in the 1980s, and his family was always on the move as a result, so he was never too familiar with the neighborhood kids who would tease him for being the new kid in town. His interest in horror would also spawn an interest in acting, which he pursued when he directed and acted in his first feature-length film, The Hidden, in 1993. Strangely, the film was screened at a major film festival in Melbourne without his knowledge or presence. Nathan's second role was as a martial artist in the film The Huntsman, and things were headed in the right direction until shortly after the film released, his parents got divorced and his mother moved away. As a result, Nathan's dream was put on hold for six years. The setback put him in a dark fog, unable to see a creative future, and he fell into a world of drug use that led to an overdose on acid. He then went missing for three days when his drug dealer held him from the public eye in order to heal in private. Back on his feet, Nathan got by working at video stores where he met Nick Levy, a filmmaker who offered him a role in the romantic comedy Radio Samurai. While filming illegal 20-hour days, Nathan experienced a stunt accident that almost cracked his spine. He was suspended on wires during a samurai sword fighting scene when the stunt crew lost control of the wires and dropped him 10 feet. To this day, the pain from the accident can be felt when he's jostled. It wasn't the only problem with production as one of Nathan's co-actors committed suicide during filming, and after it wrapped, a close friend of his on the shoot died of pneumonia at age 30. A stream of misfortune then followed Nathan, as he was asked to take part in a horror film called The Tub by American novelist Richard Lehman. But days into the shoot, Lehman passed away and the film had to be shelved. He was then involved in a production called The Great Dream, playing a psychotic alien vampire named Marab. However, due to the stunt coordinator sexually abusing one of the lead females, this too had to be abandoned. He was also asked to screen test for the role of Cass in Blonde, a Marilyn Monroe miniseries, but the role was taken up by Patrick Dempsey, who insisted he play the role. Having difficulty finding work in his city, Nathan turned to filmmaking itself and attended film school. While attending, he made his first professional short, The Upsell, which was a contender for Trope Fest. However, one of his main props was vandalized one night, leaving him in financial difficulty. On top of this, he had trouble with family at home, and as a result, had to move in with his girlfriend or become homeless. Nathan had struck up a friendship with Australian actress Alethea McGrath, whose husband had a part for him in a film he was producing. However, after Alethea passed away, her husband lost funding for the film, and it too had to be scrapped. In 2003, Nathan was cast for a bit part for the series Crashburn, but his experience on set wasn't a pleasant one. Extras were treated like animals kept in a windowless 4x4 concrete room and told when they could leave to eat, drink, and go to the bathroom. They were fed last and treated poorly by those who saw themselves as higher on the food chain. After he was sure they wouldn't end up giving him the part, Nathan walked off set. In 2004, Nathan embarked on making his graduate piece at film school, his own interpretation of Jekyll and Hyde. In the film, Hyde was portrayed by a local actor named Michael Burkett, who after shooting Rapt, jumped in front of a train and committed suicide. He had a wife who was pregnant, and it was later discovered that he did it because he deep down didn't think he could make it as an actor. The impact of failure in his mind was worth his life. 
After a trip to LA, Nathan returned home and attempted to showcase his award-winning Jekyll and Hyde short on Australia ABC. However, for reasons unknown, the programming manager pulled out at the last minute. Nathan had an argument with the network and risked being blacklisted because he wanted to know why America responded to his films, yet his own country didn't. Afterward, he went on an eight-day river expedition as chief camera operator for a mockumentary that would become Apocalypse Canoe. During the trip, unknown to him, most of his team was taking acid. At the end of the excursion, one of the lead actors decided to spend some time in a sweat lodge. Unexpectedly, and at a very young age, the actor died during the session. Nathan owns the only ever footage shot of the man. One of Nathan's most ambitious projects he'd been working on for many years was an occultist film called Black Mass, a story based loosely on the Lost Boys, and fittingly enough, would enlist the help of Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, and Feldman's agent. The project also attracted Julian Sands and Nathan's soon-to-be mentor, William Catt, who claimed his script was one of the best character-driven pieces he'd ever read. Things were looking good for the project. All Nathan needed was government funding support and completion guarantees to get overseas investors' approval. However, Nathan had had problems with the AFC in the past, and this was no exception. Even with the list of known American actors involved, they refused to fund the project. Nathan resorted to turning to a private investor in Nevada, which would have worked out well until his leading man Corey Haim passed away. Nathan was battered and tormented, taking defeat after defeat and being witness to so much sadness and death. He felt helpless and alone. After the project he'd spent so much time on was shelved, he suffered a mental breakdown, hiding in his apartment for the better part of a year, drinking and smoking heavily. Following this dark time in his life were a few ups and more downs. Good friend Nick Levy dragged Nathan out of hibernation to take part in the mockumentary How to Be a Sex Star, which was loosely based on The Game by Neil Strauss. The film landed opening night at the Australian Film Festival in Sydney and caught the attention of an American distribution company, who offered them a deal. Unfortunately, they wanted some scenes cut and others to be redone, which Levy refused and suddenly shelved the film, leaving Nathan confused. Sometime later, while shooting one of his martial arts epics, Revenge of the Guilo, Nathan learned that one of his friends, David Bishop, had died in a car crash. David had been on his way to a financing trip, Interstate, to secure funding for a movie that he wanted Nathan to co-produce. On that day, Nathan was to shoot a scene where his partner is killed. The tears in his eyes are real. One of the last projects to note was called House on Bond, where due to the success of Revenge of the Guilo, Nathan wanted to throw his name in the ring for director. He was turned down, however, for a younger, less experienced candidate, which felt very ill-advised and unfair to him. It was then he turned his back not only on the local industry, but on his own country, stating, Shame on you, Australia, for treating one of your own in this fashion.